Well, welcome back to another Sage video. And uh, today I've got some interesting things that I hope that you'll enjoy. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about my uh, original bus, the pre-war Silver Sides 1941 Greyhound that uh, I've been working on since the fall of 2019. Um, if you've never seen this bus before, uh, go back and look through my playlists. And there's a collection of videos from uh, Scott, the bus grease monkey, and from Tyler, who is Indiana Diesel. Um, as well as others that I shot, um, kind of put together on the two weeks I spent in Ohio, uh, getting this bus brought back to life and bringing it to Indianapolis. And that's where it is right now. And so uh, we're going to watch some videos today on that. I hope that you're going to enjoy that. Um, how are you doing? Uh, hopefully you're doing okay with this uh, COVID stay in place. Hopefully you're being safe and making good choices. Um, I have decided to let myself go. And I think that you can tell here when you look at uh, this and this and well, this that um, I've just decided I don't have to go anywhere. Um, I talk a lot on the telephone uh, and so uh, nobody really is going to see me for a while. Let's just see where this really goes if we go au natural. And so this is kind of the look it is and maybe I'll become a long in the tooth sort of guy. But uh, uh, this is kind of where we are at this point, uh, six weeks into this uh, whole situation. So the videos today, I hope that you'll enjoy. The first one we're going to look at is a kind of a walk around the bus uh, that I did in January, kind of talking about some of the things I want to get done. Um, second video really gets into the springs, and this is pretty neat if you're into bus restoration. Uh, we have some video from the foundry actually building the springs um, and some conversation with Chris Carter at Carter's Garage who had to pull the springs out. And uh, boy, it's a tough project, uh, at least this particular project is going to be a tough one. But hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, the springs will be back on and some of the things you see in these videos will get rolling again. And so we're kind of happy about that. So uh, finally, I'll end up today with some decisions that I'm, I'm trying to make on electronics and appearance and things like that. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy it. And uh, here we go. Well, we're into January and I'm back looking at the bus starting to work on the punch list that we've got for it. And so some work has been done since uh, I left. Uh, Carter and his crew have been working on several different things. Um, for starters, one of the big things that we had on the list was to turn the brakes and to replace the leaf springs. The springs on the bad, back weren't too bad, they were sagging. But uh, we found a vendor we think that's not going to be too expensive to have the leaf springs uh, replaced. And so it's one of those things, you sit and you look at uh, Scott, the bus grease monkey's uh, bus, and he's having trouble with his springs right now. He, he put in airbags and they don't seem to be working well. And so I think if, if I've got it all ripped apart, it's, you know, just get it done. So... There's some options, and there's a leaf company, spring company, with a foundry that's actually building the springs. If you take a look, that's a lot of layers. So you've got like one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, ten. It's like 12 layers. And I asked them, uh, do we need to have this many layers? And it's very interesting. His response was, well, it'll be a stiffer ride if we use thicker spring, leaf spring, and we have less layers of leaf spring and so he kind of left that as a, a question to me my bearings are in good shape of course the brake shoes are sitting here from gene russell and those will get replaced as this is all apart the cans the brake cans are going to be replaced i think as well we're going to take a look at those and see if it's the right kind of can so that's going pretty well there's uh there's always other work that's happening one of the other big things that has been daunting is finding a new flange. And so this connects to the drive shaft right here. So that's the flange. It goes to, from the transmission, connects to the drive shaft, which of course then turns the rear differential. That's how the bus moves. And so when I was here <clears throat> parking it in uh, late November, that drive shaft flange actually pulled out. We, we broke the U-joint, and that kind of ripped out. And uh, it's kind of come down to the fact that the flange has got some problems. And so if you take a look, there's two holes right here. You see 
But you look on the other side, when we were in Belpre, we discovered that this had been snapped off and that we made a makeshift cap on it, but that the flange itself should probably just be replaced. It's, it's obvious that it's had some trouble. So finding one of these is one of those unicorn parts. And so I have a guy who does distributor parts, or uh, not distributor parts, uh, differential parts and things like that, that is a spicer dealer. So I'm hoping that he can find a flange that works like this. So I have to measure that up today and start working on finding another one of those for Chris. Um, so that's kind of the mechanical projects that they're working on. And uh, so that's good. I was hoping it would get all cleaned up, but that's been delayed. And it is winter here. I mean, we're having a really nice day today. There's no snow on the ground here or anything, but, uh, you know, it is winter. So my primary responsibility this week is to be working on this rat's nest. And uh, you take a look at it. Of course, our makeshift dashboard to get here. But this is a... This is a colossal mess. This is not a very complicated bus, right? You, you don't have probably more than 15 to 20 different leads. And it just, whoever did this, just, I don't know what they were doing. But inevitably, you know, pulling this all apart and then uh, fixing it is going to require some kind of detective work. I've got the schematics. Um, we've pretty much figured out what needs to get done. And now I want to rebuild it. And so, like right now, they use these toggle switches. Originally, they used these push buttons where you push the button and it would turn things on. They're called uh, mo momentary switches. So I went to an electronics place today and I found and I sourced a switch manufacturer for that. Well, that's one thing that needs to, to get working on. The other are all of these windows. Now, my windows aren't cracked, but you can see they're old, right? They're probably from the 40s or 50s, and it's time for them to be replaced. That one's cracked. This one is starting to fog up. And so if you go all along, there are, I think, something like, uh, well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a window back here. Seven, it's hiding. Eight nine. So there's ten windows on each side, plus the pair of windows on the back. So that's 22, 24, plus the driver windows. So that's 26. And then we can't forget the marquee up above the windshield, the, uh, the marquee. So those windows um, are not too bad to replace. That front windshield is about $72. So are these side windows. And to get sealed tempered glass, if, if I got away from sliders and just went to solid tempered glass, they really only run about 65 bucks each. So if you think about it, that you need 20, which would be about how many of these I need, that's $1,200, $1,300. That's not bad to replace all the glass in this bus. And why do you do it now? I mean, I don't know. I've got lots and lots of things to, to be on here. I want to get the coach, the outside of the coach is as holistic as we can first and then start working on the interior and things like that and so I've got to rebuild this dashboard you know and that is going to be tough I have to rerun the electronics and so as I go along I want to get it as close to what it was when it was originally built as I can and so that's part of what I'm going to be uh, working on and then I'll work on the interior later. I mean, it's functional right now. It doesn't have heat or it doesn't have, uh, um, you know, a stove or anything like that. I can live with that. I, you know, I'm a Volkswagen guy. I've got a two burner stove, little portable two burner stove that we can set up. The water system I can get rehooked up. So I can live with this interior for a bit, but I want to get the coach 100%. So that's kind of what I'm here today working on is to document the windows and break down exactly how many I need. And then start figuring out some of the other needs for the electronics um, as I get done. So those are the things that uh, hopefully I'll get recorded today. And then I can move on to uh, getting planning back at, at my house and get some parts ordered. 
trying to save the wood grain paneling. So let's see if that works out. And the bus, of course, is in the midst of uh, some pretty serious things going on. Probably the most exciting thing about the bus at this point is that we managed to get the springs pulled out. And that has been described as the hardest project to do on a silver sides. And I don't know if you've ever seen one, but the spring sat there, and now it's pulled out. And uh, take a look at this side. That's kind of where the spring would sit. But it's been taken out of uh, one side. We're going to take them to a spring manufacturer and have uh, new springs put on. So Chris Carter, which he has his own channel, I'll put in my, uh, I'll link it in my video, uh, the notes down below, has been working on this bus since we got it to Indiana. And the biggest project so far has been taking the springs off. And you want to kind of relay what you relayed to me earlier about how much fun that was? Yeah. Well, I've never messed with anything that's had uh, threaded pins for your bushings. Here's one of them right here. This is actually the pin that goes through the leaf spring, and in the leaf spring itself, right here, it's threaded where your bushing is. Okay. So they thread in and out. Yeah. Usually, on most stuff, which after doing some research, I found out some older Macs were like this too, but those were the only ones that were like it. But most of the time, they press in and out. Yeah. So I made a press tool and all kinds of stuff. Finally, after fighting with it for enough time, we had one of them out with the uh, bushing. So we threw it in the parts washer and cleaned all the grease off of it, and I found out that it threaded. So Chris was able to pull apart the springs and uh, get them ready. And a guy named Ed from uh, a spring manufacturer in Ohio stopped by to pick them up and took them to his foundry. And so we're going to see some videos here, a montage of videos of them putting it together. It's, it's quite a process, so I hope you'll enjoy this step in uh, getting my springs put back together. And so that's the video that they sent us, uh, you know, not high res stuff shot on their phone, but you get the idea. It's uh, it's a pretty serious construction. So as you can see in the pictures here, everything turned out great. Um, they're really heavy. Um, and so now we're waiting for Tyler and Chris in the next couple of weeks to put them in. And I'm sure that video will be both on uh, Carter's Garage uh, and the Indiana Diesel websites. And we'll look forward to that. Uh, once they get the work done and I can keep going on with my stuff. I thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you saw, subscribe and uh, don't forget to like it if, uh, if it did something for you. And I hope to bring you more videos, but it's pretty tough when I'm hundreds of miles away from both my bus projects. Have a great day.